Hey guys, welcome back. Today, three phase induction motor, okay guys? And uh, we've been talking about uh, single phase induction motors. And uh, the good news is that the three phase induction motor works exactly the same way as the single phase induction motor, only it's even cooler, okay? Because if I look at the uh, single phase induction motor here, guys, uh, you know, what was the problem with it? Well, it wouldn't start, right? Because I had my windings on there and naturally if I connected an AC to those, you know, poles, it, they would be alternating and not rotating. But um, with a three phase induction motor, because it's three phase, you know, I'm going to build it like this, you know, pretend all these phases are the same size here, guys. And, uh, Put my three windings on there and so it's going to look like this okay guys and uh, I'm gonna have my uh, a winding right here and I'm gonna have my B winding right here and I'm going to have my C winding right here All right guys and if I look at those sine waves they're gonna look like this All right guys Let's get this nice and straight here. I'm going to have my three phase winding that are going to be, you know, electrically 120 degrees apart. Uh, what? Blue? Blue next. Okay. So we're going to have these things electrically 120 degrees apart. And so when you get this ABC thing going on, it's nicely going on. Yeah, let's get all the markers going here, all in the right order, right guys? All right, so we get three uh, phase going on here. I'm going to get A, whoops, that's supposed to be a B, right? A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C, you know, A, B, C. And so when we have our three phase induction motor, we are very naturally going to get a nice rotating magnetic field. And then all I have to do is put you know the same rotor in there that I have in the single phase machine big chunk of steel aluminum bars all the way around as soon as I turn on the big disconnect for this thing I get a naturally rotating magnetic field here that thing starts to get a whole bunch of flux crossing through those bars bunch of current through the bars bunch of magnetic field around those bars and that magnetic field will rotate at close to the sync speed. Same formula for calculating sync speed. Let's see if we can remember what it is. Let's see if I can remember what it is, right? It's going to be, how do you spell sync? I don't know how I spelled it in the last lessons, but uh, so this one right here, right? N is equal to one F times 120 over P. And so if this was 60 Hertz, guys, and two pole, I could calculate the <coughs> sync speed for this machine with the exact same formula that I use for the single phase machine. It's going to be 60 times 120 over two. Now the only question is, how many poles is this motor? Well, the answer is, this is a two pole motor. Well, it looks like it has six poles. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Well, it's true that it physically has six poles, but for this formula, guys, you always use the number of poles per phase. And since I have two poles per phase for this particular machine, this is going to be considered a two-pole motor. Okay, guys? And so that's why I used a two in here. If I had a four-pole motor, guys, it would have four poles per phase. There would be a total of 12 poles that you could physically see around this thing, but it would still be a four pole motor. And so if I figured this out, whoops, if I figured this out, guys, we would find out that this machine is gonna have a sync speed of 3600 RPM, same as a single phase two pole motor. Remember when I said there's really only two common types of induction motors? One is one that runs at close to 3600 RPM, and that's because it's a two pole. And then the other most common one is one that runs at close to 1800 RPM, and that would be a four pole. 
And there are some six pole motors maybe out there, but they're pretty rare, okay? And so since this thing has a sync speed of 3,600 RPM because it is a two pole, it's probably going to have a number like, you know, 3,500 or 3,450 or, you know, something like that on the nameplate, depending on the motor. But in every other respect, guys, this thing runs exactly the same as a single pole induction motor. Okay, it's going to slip. The current through the rotor here is going to increase the more it slips. It's going to slip more if it's under more load. If you have an increase in current in the rotor bars, you are going to get a corresponding increase in current in the stator winding. Okay, and that is why the current for this machine will be proportional to how much load you put on it. Now, the nice thing about this particular machine, guys, is that it has no centrifugal switch, right? Got no start winding, doesn't need one. That means it has no centrifugal switch, which basically makes this motor bulletproof, okay, guys? Because on a single phase motor, guys, the centrifugal switch and the start capacitor, those are the two things that always, you know, give everybody trouble, all right? Because this doesn't have any start capacitors and because it doesn't have a centrifugal switch, this thing is unbelievably reliable, okay? And it just basically does not break down. I mean, it has no moving parts. This rotor is a big chunk of iron and aluminum, and then these stator windings are, you know, a bunch of copper, and they can burn out. That's about the only thing that can go wrong with this thing, other than the bearings, okay? The bearings on the shaft, obviously, can, you know, go bad over time. But uh, because it doesn't have uh, those annoying parts like the single-phase machine does, this thing will run for like 10 years. You won't even have to look at it, all right? Now, uh, because it's so similar to the single-phase machine, guys, um, don't really need to talk about it a lot. We will talk about reversing AC motors for a minute. And if I want to reverse, and maybe you guys know this, okay, guys? But if I want to reverse a single, a three-phase induction motor, guys, the way I would do it, is open the junction box and switch, you know, any two phases, right, guys? Because if you think about this, this right now is going A, B, C, A, B, C. And so in this configuration, guys, this motor will run in the direction of the, you know, rotating magnetic field, which is, you know, counterclock, looks like clockwise here, guys. But if I took the wires and switched phase A and phase B, Okay, guys, then this would become a B, right, guys? And uh, this one right here would become an A, right? Switching A and B. And what I end up with is instead of A, B, C, I end up with A, B, C, A, B, C. And so you can see that by switching any two phases in a three-phase machine, the machine starts to run in the opposite direction. Now we didn't talk about it when we talked about single phase, but let's do it now for a second. How do I reverse a single phase motor? Well, on a single phase motor, we had the start winding that was getting the thing started, you know, and hopefully we were getting like a pulse here and then a pulse here and then a pulse here and then a pulse here. And so if we were getting that, we were getting a rotation that was clockwise in this thing. If I want to reverse a single phase motor, I got to switch the polarity of the start winding. You can actually switch one or the other, okay guys? You can do the start winding or the run winding, but most of the time, if you look at the motor nameplate, it will show you how to reverse the motor by switching the start winding. And if you do that, instead of getting like a pulse here, here, then here, then here, you're going to get a pulse here, here, then here, then here. And so switching the start winding will switch the polarity of the rotation to get things started, right? Once the start winding comes out of the circuit, it uh, runs on the alternating magnetic field anyway, and so then the start winding doesn't matter anymore, okay? Basically, the start winding is going to get it started, right, guys? And then after it's started, it's going to just keep running. Okay, guys, so that's the three-phase induction motor. Come back. We'll talk a little bit more about it, maybe do some troubleshooting, uh, some tips on troubleshooting and how to tell whether the motor is in good condition or bad. Okay, guys?